What is up, everybody? JT Dangerously here once again. I am here to do my official New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 30 2020 predictions. Now, the G1 Climax 30 tournament starts this Saturday morning live on NewJapanWorld.com and all culminates on Sunday, October 18th, where the winner of this year's G1 Climax will challenge the IWGP Heavyweight and IWGP Intercontinental Champion Tetsuya Naito at Wrestle Kingdom 15 in the Tokyo Dome. Now, if Naito can win the G1 Climax this year as a champion, he can hand-pick his opponent. So I am extremely excited to do my G1 Climax 30 predictions for you guys this year. This could be a long video because I'll be breaking down the blocks, the competitors, my initial thoughts, my top five, and my finals predictions all in this one video. So sit back, relax, grab something to drink and eat, and I hope you guys do enjoy. And hopefully you guys will be able to watch this video and all the videos that I put up on the channel in the month of September. And as always, show your support as always, guys, by watching these videos, super kicking those like buttons, hitting that notification bell, and commenting your picks, your opinions in the comment sections down below. Now, if this is your first time watching my channel today, guys, as a first-time viewer, and this is your first video, boy, you're picking to go in if you're a huge fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling like myself, and you're ready for this year's G1 Climax. Welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. I'm JT Dangerously. Welcome to the club, because this club is... Just, just, two. Again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, let's get right into my G1 Climax 30 predictions. Let's begin in Block A with the competitors. First, he is a former Ring of Honor television champion and a former Never Openweight champion. He is making his second G1 Climax appearance. He is the Hawaiian juggernaut himself, Jeff Cobb. Next, he is representing Suzuki Gun. Ichiban, and he is a former two-time Never Open Weight Champion, a former multiple-time Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champion, and he is one half of the reigning IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. He is also making his second G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. Lord Taichi. Next, he is representing Chaos, and he is a former multiple-time Never Openweight Champion, and he is one-third of the reigning Never Openweight Six-Man Tag Team Champions. He is making his eighth G1 Climax appearance, and he is one tough some bitch. And if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is the Stone Pitbull Tomohiro Ishii or Golem. Next, he is also representing Chaos and he is making his return to New Japan Pro Wrestling and he is the current and reigning Rev Pro British Heavyweight Champion and if you guys remember his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is the aerial assassin Will Ospreay. Next, he is representing the cutthroat darkness era of and he is making his seventh G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is the 
Tokyo Pimps, Yujiro Takahashi. Next, he is representing Los in Gobernables de Apone, and he is the former Never Open Weight Champion. He is making his second G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is the dragon, Shingo Takagi. Next, he is the leader of Suzuki Gun, Ichiban, and he is the brand new two-time Never Open Weight Champion, making his ninth G1 Climax appearance. He is the sadist and torture master himself. He is Minoru Suzuki. And next, he is the leader of Chaos, and he is a former two-time winner of the G1 Climax back in 2012 and 2014, and he is the former five-time IWGP Heavyweight Champion, making his ninth G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada. Next, he is the leader of the Cutthroat Darkness era of... And he is the former IWGP Heavyweight Champion, the former IWGP Intercontinental Champion, and the former IWGP United States Champion. He will be accompanied by his manager, the booking god Gato, making his third G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, You'll know who I'm talking about. It's time for all of you to once again start breathing with the... Switchblade, Jay White. And finally, you have the man who made history last year and be winning his first G1 Climax in his entire career and became the first man in New Japan Pro Wrestling history to win all, all three singles men's tournaments. And he's looking to become the first man since Masamahiro Chono to repeat as the G1 Climax champion. He is making his sixth G1 Climax appearance. He is the former IWGP heavyweight tag team champion, a former IWGP Intercontinental champion, and in my opinion, he is the future and next IWGP heavyweight and IWGP Intercontinental champion. And if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about, and he is Kane Gaming's favorite wrestler. Now, my initial thoughts on A Block this year in the 30th G1 Climax. This block is stacked. And I mean stacked from top to bottom. I mean, look at the look at the matches we're gonna get in this A block for the G1 Climax this year. I mean, you got Suzuki and Okada, Suzuki and Ibushi, Shingo and Osprey, the matchup we could have got in the New Japan Cup this past March, but we didn't. We're gonna see Shingo versus uh, Okada, Shingo versus Switchblade. Uh, Ishii versus Will Ospreay, Ishii versus Okada, Osprey versus Ibushi. There's so many bangers in this block. It is stupid stacked. And the fact that this that this 
this A block this year is as stacked as it has ever been is no exception to where we're going to have just we're going to have bangers left and right every night in A block. That is a guarantee from me because I don't see one bad match happening in this block. Yeah, Tai Chi and Yujiro in it, but I mean, you got Shingo, you got Shingo, Okada, Switchblade, Ibushi, Suzuki, Osprey, Ishii, and Cobb. I mean, that's a pretty damn banger of a block this A block is this year, and I am really excited for A block when it comes to watching it. Now on to my top five winners that could win A Block this year. Now starting at number five for me, I'm picking Shingo Takagi. Now Shingo Takagi had a very good showing last year in his debut in the G1 Climax Tournament. But I think his second year is going to be a little bit better. I think he can have more points than he did last year. So at number five, I have Shingo Takagi. At number four, I have Tomohiro Ishii. Now Ishii always steps up his game when it comes to the G1. He always has banger matches and block matches. And knowing a lot of longtime Ishii fans, a lot of people are thinking this is Ishii year and they're looking to get Ishii his first G1 Climax Tournament victory. At number three, I have the reigning G1 Climax champion, Kota Ibushi. Now, yes, I was very happy Kota Ibushi won the G1 last year. I was the one who predicted him to win it. And this year, he's looking to make the finals for the third straight year. And I think that chance of him doing that is very slim. But I do believe Ibushi could be the one that could take the briefcase from the eventual winner of the G1 Climax this year and get his opportunity at the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championship. So at number three, I have Golden Star Kota Ibushi. At number two, I have Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada. Now, I know a lot of people would say, oh, Okada's going to win it this year and get Naito once again. But do we really want to see Naito versus Okada again at Wrestle Kingdom? We saw it this past year on night two for both belts. I don't think we're going to need to see it again at another Wrestle Kingdom. And that's why I think Okada at number, uh, at number two is my pick. So at number two, I have Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada. And now my number one pick. To win A Block this year is my boy Switchblade J White. Now, Switchblade J White made it to the finals last year before losing to Kota Ibushi in the finals, but I think this year is going to be Switchblade's year. It is the Switchblade era in 2020, and with the additions of Evil and Dick Togo, Bullet Club is getting stronger and better than ever. And I think Switchblade needs to win this tournament because I think he's maybe the biggest threat to Naito other than Okada and Ibushi. And it's a chance to bring back both those belts back to Bullet Club. So coming from me, to win Block A of this year's G1 Climax Tournament, I am taking my boy Switchblade J. White. And now on to B Block, starting off with the competitors. First, he is the former IWGP United States Champion and a former IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champion. He is making his fourth G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is the flamboyant one, Juice Robinson. Next, he is representing Los Ingobernables de Apon, and he is making his fifth G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is Cold Skull Sonata. Next, he is also representing the Cutthroat Darkness era of... And he is the man who holds a future IWGP United States Championship opportunity after he won the New Japan Cup of USA Tournament. He is only making his second G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about.
is Kenta. Next, he is representing Chaos and he is making his 15th consecutive G1 Climax appearance. And if you know his music, making its theme debut on the channel, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is the Sublime Master Thief, Toriyanu. Next, he is also representing Chaos, and he is one-third of the brand new Never Open Weight Six-Man Tag Team Champions. He is making his fourth G1 Climax appearance. He is headhunter himself, Yoshi Hashi. Next, he is representing Suzuki Gun, Ichiban, and he is one half of the reigning IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions with his partner Lord Taichi, and he is the former multiple-time Ref Pro British Heavyweight Champion, making his fourth G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> He is Zack Sabre Jr. Next, he is representing Chaos, and he won the G1 Climax all the way back in 2008. He is a former multiple-time Never Open Weight Champion. He is making his 13th G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is the Fierce Warrior, Hiroki Goto. Next, he is the only man in G1 Climax history to win the G1 Climax three times. He won it in 2007, 2015, and 2018, making his 19th G1 Climax, uh, of, 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 making his 19th G1 Climax appearance. He is indeed the ace of the universe, and if you know his music, his old music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is Hiroshi Tanahashi. Next, he is the de facto leader of the Cutthroat Darkness era of... And he is making his fifth G1 Climax appearance, and he is the former IWGP Heavyweight and IWGP Intercontinental Champion. He will be accompanied by his manager, the spoiler Dick Togo, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about. He is king of darkness, evil, because this is evil. Everything is evil. It's real. And finally, you have the leader of Los Ingobernables de Apon, and he is now once again the reigning three-time IWGP heavyweight champion and the only man in New Japan Pro Wrestling history to hold the IWGP Intercontinental title six times, making his 11th G1 Climax appearance, and if you know his music, you'll know who I'm talking about.
Ooh, Naito! He is Tetsuya Naito. Now, my initial thoughts on B Block this year. It's not a bad block. It's nowhere near as good as A Block this year. That is for damn sure. But it's not a bad block. I mean, you got some interesting names in this tournament, in this B Block, like Jews and Toriano, who could be, who can pose a lot of problems to any of these guys. You got Evil coming off his loss to Naito at Jingu Stadium. You have Naito coming in as the double champion. You got Zack Sabre Jr. You got Yoshihashi winning his first title in his entire career. You got Goto, who's been here before, and you got the veteran in Tanahashi. So this B block is not too bad, but it's nowhere near as good as A block this year. And that is a fact. Now, sorry, now on to my top five picks to win B block this year. At number five, I have Kenta. Now, Kenta already won the New Japan Cup of USA tournament by defeating David Finley and getting that future IWGP United States Championship shot against John Moxley. And a G1 and a G1 climax victory would definitely be an icing on the cake for uh, for Kenta. So at number five, I have Kenta. At number four, I have Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. does very well in these G1 Climax tournaments. I mean, he's a submission specialist, maybe the best technical wrestler in the wrestling world today, bar none. And I can see Zack Sabre Jr. posing a lot of trouble to a lot of these competitors. And I wouldn't mind seeing Zack Sabre Jr. tap out Naito and get a, maybe an IC title shot before he defends the heavyweight title. So at number four, I have Zack Sabre Jr. At number three, I have Toriyanu because Toriyanu just makes every person in that block miserable. I mean, he's the man who beat Moxley last year. He gave Moxley his first loss in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Toriyanu did that. And Toriyanu making his 15th consecutive G1 Climax appearance, he is going to be scary to put down because he'll do whatever it takes to win. He'll take off the ring ropes. He will, he will low blow you, get the tape and tape your legs to a young line. He will do that stuff. And Yano is going to be very dangerous in this block. So at number three, I have Toriyanu. At number two, I have the reigning IWGP heavyweight and Intercontinental Champion Tetsuya Naito. Now, a couple couple hours ago, I was thinking Naito was going to make the finals, but it would be kind of stupid for the champion to get get to the finals and then lose. But Naito is definitely looking at all uh, looking at the people in this block as potential challengers for either his IC title or his heavyweight title. And he has said. He wants to start defending the title separately, not as just being the double champion. He wants to defend the title in one match and then defend another title in another. And that's what I'm really hoping he does. But Naito is going to have a huge bullseye on his shoulder because you got um, you got so many challengers for those two belts in this block. So at number two, I have Tetsuya Naito. And now my number one pick to win B block this year, and this may come as a surprise, but I'm going with King of Darkness Evil. I think Evil is going to look to do whatever it takes. We saw him do whatever it takes in the New Japan Cup this year and winning the New Japan Cup. And now Evil is coming off losing the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental title to Naito at Jingu Stadium one month ago. And I think Evil is going to be poised to make a, a deep run in this tournament. And I wouldn't be surprised he wins it. So, I, so coming from me, my number one pick to win B Block this year in the 30th G1 Climax is King of Darkness Evil. And now my finals predictions to see who will be challenging Naito for the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championship at Wrestle Kingdom 15. And it's a battle between two leaders of Bullet Club. On one side you have my A Block winner, Switchblade Jay White, looking to become the first Bullet Club member to win the G1 Climax since Kenny Omega did it back in 2016. Facing off against the COVID leader of Bullet Club, King of Darkness Evil, my B Block winner, looking to win the New Japan Cup and the G1 Climax all in one year. So, coming from me, in this year's finals of the 2020 G1 Climax 30 tournament, this one's tough because, yes, this is kind of like a semi Bullet Club mini war because Switchblade Jay White is the leader of Bullet Club, and since he's been gone, Evil has taken over as the de facto leader of Bullet Club. So, it's kind of a civil war, but I, I don't, it's kind of too early for that. I think this is a good way to plant the seeds of a civil war between Bullet Club, between the leaders. But coming from me, he didn't win it last year, 
But I think this is the year he gets it done. So coming from me, I am going to go with Switchblade Jay White to win his first G1 Climax and be the first New Zealander to win a G1 Climax tournament and be the first Bullet Club member to win the G1 Climax for the first time since Kenny Omega in 2016 and defeat King of Darkness Evil. And it's time to all of you to breathe with the Switchblade. And those are my 2020 new, uh, G1 Climax 20, 30, 30, 30, 2020 predictions. Whew, now, I want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Comment below, who do you see winning the G1 Climax this year? For me, I have Switchblade Jay White winning, defeating King of Darkness Evil. But let me know what you guys think. Who do you see winning A Block, and who do you see winning B Block, and what is your potential G1 Climax Finals? Let me know who you got. As always, let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I'm always on the your comment. Like it, and of course, reply right back to you, because comments are absolutely always welcome on this channel. And I do want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Now, before you guys go, as always, you guys can never forget to do this that like button comment share with your friends of course super kick that like button like only you guys can of course you guys can never forget to do this as well that subscribe button become part of this bigger and dangerous dangerous alliance we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet what are you waiting for? Super kick that subscribe button and become part of this bigger and dangerous, dangerous alliance. And I will see you guys on Monday night for my official week two NFL predictions. Later days, guys. Stay safe and peace.